On this little segment of uh, YouTube video, we're going to talk about putting on the rails or the gunnels. I've already got the uh, port side or starboard side, outside rail on, and I've got the clamps on the uh, port side. I'm going to start taking off. Uh, I use Gorilla Glue on the inside uh, of the rail and uh, moisten down the plywood for them to hold. You can see I've got lots of clamps. You're going to start out in the middle where I've got a uh, a scarf joint right here because I used uh, 8 foot lengths of wood because I couldn't get 14 footers at my supplier at the time I started building this boat. But I put in uh, some uh, scarfs using my great big A8 plane, put the pieces parallel, the plane is wide enough to run down the ramp at one time and get both of them. So as long as you keep it steady in a vertical angle, you'll make them both the same and then if you learned in geometry on uh, a line crossing parallel lines that the angle will be the same. So you wind up with matching faces that you will later surface one coat with, um, well, as much, as much as it takes of epoxy to fill in that long bit of ingrain. You want to fill that up so that uh, no more epoxy later when you join them will be sucked into it and create uh, a weak joint. So you will take and fill the ends of the, or coat the ends of those rails with epoxy, let it soak in, let it cure, give it a good sand, coat it again, and then put it together. I'll put in a still photo of a jig I used to hold them in place while they cured. And uh, then I'll show you another little bit of video of how I pre-bend. These rails will spend at least two weeks or more, depending on how they get to this part of the, of the project, and they'll be pre-bent. So when I get ready to use them, the wood has already had some flex put into it so when I'm wrapping it around the edge of, of the hull here and you can see it's quite a bit of curve to this double ender uh, I'm not going to snap that uh, piece of wood uh, in half as I do it. So uh, one, let me take the clamps off and we'll come back and look at some of the details. I'm using my big A8 plane to uh, plane in a ramp uh, to be parallel you can see the uh, side shot of the two uh, rails that have been shaped. And then they were clamped up in the jig after being uh, wetted first and then sanded and wetted again. This is what I was referring to earlier when I said that I pre-bend my rails a couple weeks before I had stumbled them. Uh, I had uh, done the uh, scarf joint, uh, joined the two uh, eight footers together in order to make a, a 16 foot which I needed for this 12 foot boat which came in to around 13 and a half feet for a full set of rails. Uh, I'm able to use the excess on the ends for the spacer blocks and so I need to uh, install the port inside rail mount so I have uh, some material to finish out the uh, starboard side spacer blocks. But you can see here where I had the, uh, the weights, the uh, outer rails on both sides had been installed setting here before I needed to put them on, but I keep the inside rails uh, pre-bent this way uh, until I'm getting, uh, until, I, until I need to use them. So I'll pull out one of them uh, now. And okay, we got the clamps off, got the rail in. I'll give you a little quick look. At, I made these clamps myself out of a piece of, uh, of oak, but uh, my, most of my clamps are made out of leftover bits of quarter inch plywood. Uh, there's four stacked, uh, so I got a one inch. The bolts are uh, 5 sixteenths. Uh, I got uh, these little uh, T-bolts, uh, threaded T-bolts at uh, my lo local woodworker's store. Uh, I find that I can use the leftover plywood and I keep a bunch of them of the, either the blanks already cut out and uh, use excess epoxy. You're always going to have little bits of jars or cups left over that you don't uh, use uh, at, when you're doing one thing. You made, oh, I made too much. What am I going to do with it? Well, keep a bunch of these little, uh, say, inch and a half by five inch, six inch bits of uh, plywood that you've uh, saved from other projects or this project and um, have them set up ready to put a coat on both sides and clamp together or uh, with epoxy, you don't have to clamp it together that hard, but uh, just a light clamping and then a little bit of rough sanding and drilling out later and you've got a, a clamp for probably uh, a couple bucks worth of hardware. So, Okay, I've got the outside rails 
all glued on both sides, and I've been working on my spacer blocks from what I call a spaced rail system, where you have uh, uh, spacers, and then the inner rail is a uh, solid from one end to the other, like the outside. Gives you a beam effect with the upper and lower tension and compression members, with the spacers in the middle, and it makes for a very, very strong uh, rail system and for a strong hull. Once these things are set, and I take the cross piece out, it doesn't move no matter how much uh, curvature is in the, in the hull. Um, got my gloves on, but I've been working with Gorilla Glue, uh, which tends to stay in your fingers. I don't know if there's any long-term health consequences or not, but it makes your fingers look like you've been playing with tar for a while. Um, the blocks are cut out and spaced. It took me a while to figure out how uh, the spacing was going to be because uh, the first thing I had to figure out were where the ore locks were going to go, which I did from my uh, tank testing. So then I had to locate those spots and then put in... Uh, let's stop for a second. Okay, here's my area where the aft ore locks are going to go. I put in a 14-inch section uh, of rail material, same thickness as the outer side rail and the same thickness as the inside rail. Because of the curvature of the hull, every one inch along that length I could cut on the plywood side a, uh, a site, uh, the full width of the rail, uh, and then uh, half, about half the distance in. That way when I clamp it down it curves to the hull and if you look real closely here you can see where the gaps where the saw marks are, uh, Gorilla Glue that was inside foamed up through. Once it gets uh, uh, sanded down and uh, finished and everything and coated with epoxy, you'll be able to see maybe some little dark outlines, uh, maybe not, depends on how the stain takes. So, okay, I've got the inside rail trimmed to the ends that I needed after I clamped it a couple times. you got to be really careful with this inside because it's wanting to bang out all the time. And it's, if you don't have any stops at the ends to keep that thing from right, because it comes up and out, it tends to want to rip off the edges of uh, the, your, your spacer blocks here. And because I'm using Melanti because it's a, a very bendable wood and, and tough enough to make a nice gunnel, but bendable, uh, it does have a little bit of softness on the edges. So uh, be careful when you're doing that because it's like the proverbial wildcat in the noodle. Um, I've got my Gorilla Glue here. The inside of the rail has been wetted out. Now I've got to put a, you know, a stream of Gorilla Glue along the inside. I kind of like the stuff, but I wish the heck they would put this in a, uh, some sort of uh, um, caulking tube where you can use a caulking gun and get some pressure. Because boy, by the time you get done squeezing this bottle, uh, your wrists and hands are just sore. And it's a good product, but terrible container. Okay, I've got it all uh, clamped down, glued. I uh, brought out a big channel locks ice grip to uh, kind of hold the rails together to keep them from rising up as I clamp them down. And every once in a while you have to give it a little, little tap. So uh, when I get to pull the clamps off tomorrow, uh, I'll come along and drill countersink holes and I'll put in some uh, inch and a half stainless screws. Uh, as a mechanical fastener to help strengthen the joint besides the glue. I never just rely on the glue. So it'll go through all the rails and into the outer rails and I probably will, I may or may not add bolts, through bolts, all the way through where the scarfs are. Uh, I think I'm just going to let it go with uh, screws only and that should do it. I've added a JPEG photo at the end here to show you what I meant by uh, having to uh, sipe the inside of the uh, spacer blocks in order to get it to bend to the hole and not the hole to bend to it. Uh, here I am cutting the uh, sipes into the pieces of wood. I'm using the light colored wood as my depth gauge and I cut down until I start cutting into it and those are spaced at about one inches. I wanted to end this off showing you a rail system that I installed on my lower bay model where the rails are uh, uh, same thickness, actually a little thicker than what I'm using now, uh, sandwiched on the either side of the plywood and then extra blocks on the inside uh, to accommodate the uh, uh, orlock sockets were added. Uh, makes a very nice uh, product either way. See you next time.